How do you select something that will be a good generator? And of course we could build our own. We could glue a load of magnets around the rim that's been suggested, attach some coils and we will have built our own generator. But that's a lot of magnets and that will make it very expensive. So I'm going to do what I think a lot of people do. And that is cast around for a motor that is going to do that job. And of course that's the question, which motor is a good motor for attaching to the big wheel to make it a generator? Or if you're building a windmill, what motor do you use that you can attach to your wind vanes to make a good generator out of your windmill? As I say, it's an across the board problem. Now motors and generators are exactly the same thing. If I put power into a motor, it will turn. If I turn a motor, it will produce power. That there isn't really, no, there isn't any difference between a motor and a generator. Only difference between them is a motor gets power in and a generator you turn to get power out. That's it. Okay, this will probably upset a fair few people, but even though we have this enormous selection of motors, there isn't a best one. Actually, it doesn't really matter that much. What matters is the turning force you can apply there, or rather the turning force it will apply when you supply a certain current and speed, and the speed at which it turns. Now, the turning force or torque on that shaft is given by NVIA cos theta. Okay, you don't need to get hold of the mathematics, you just need to get hold of the idea that there's a fixed relationship between torque magnetic field and wire that's in that motor stroke generator and that relationship is reversible. They govern the performance torque of a motor. As I said before, motors and generators are identical. So if we have a turning force, a torque coming out on that shaft, when we supply a current, if we reverse that and supply that torque at that rated speed, that will be the power that the generator gives out, less of course a few losses. Now I'm sure we all know how a motor works. You have a static magnetic field, you supply a current to a coil, and of course that creates a magnetic field around that coil, and we get rotation. In a generator, of course we rotate it and create a current in the coil. But just like if we fed the coil uh, with a current, it creates a magnetic field, if we generate a current in a coil, it creates a magnetic field. The magnetic field created in a generator is counter to the direction of rotation, so it's called the counter torque. So when we spin that, we create a counter torque in the field coils that resist us spinning it. So let's assume we're not going to build our own generator. Let's assume that we go out and find a motor that we want to use. And the information we need for that is how much power we have to put in, what torque it will generate, and what speed of rotation. And if you look at motors, you'll find these are specified on their data sheets. So this one, for instance, this is 12 volts. It's meant to turn at 1,000 RPM, and it will generate a torque at the shaft of 0.8 newton meters. That is the specification for that now, motor. It will generate torque given 12 times 1.2, which is the watts that are going in there. In order to overcome the counter torque, I have to provide at least the torque of the motor. So if this is 0.8 newton meters, and I supply this shaft with 0.8 newton meters at 1,000 RPM, I will get less losses, the same amount that I actually needed to put in to make it a motor. So I hope that's pretty clear, because a motor has a specification of power in to generate a torque at a speed on the shaft. That can be used as an estimate of the counter torque that we need. That is, how fast we need to turn the shaft at what force to get the same power back out. To be absolutely but it crystal clear about this, so I do feel I'm banging on about it a little bit, but I do know that this is something that is a favourite of people to hold dear to their hearts, that some motors are better than others. Just to be clear, this motor is rated at 1000 RPM, 12 volts, 1.2 amps and 0.8 newton meters on the shaft. We need that information, because we can take that information from any motor, and what it will tell us is that if I apply 0.8 newton meters on that at a speed of a thousand rpm I will get about 12 watts out because that's where I needed to put in to get that. 
course there'll be some losses so it's a guide but counter talk or rather talk is a good guide to the counter talk needed so the talk for a motor is a guide for the counter talk for it being a generator i hope i'm clear of course some people are going to argue about efficiency yeah but modern motors are so much more efficient you can look up efficiency this thing, it's about 75% efficient or so, somewhere around about there. It's a standard brush DC motor, so it'd be around that region. If you look up the efficiency on this thing, you'll find it's 80% efficient. So there's a 5% difference between these two. Not that great, if you ask me. This thing, it's about 90% efficient, which I found rather surprising, to be honest. So yes, efficiency will differ, for sure, and you tend to pay more for the greater efficiency. But surprisingly enough, these are far more efficient than these. This is perhaps the least efficient, that's very true. So efficiency will make a difference, yes, but not the kind of difference that you think. And I think quite surprising because um, these things are very popular and yet not that great. They're only about 80% efficient, these are far more efficient. They're not, hardly any more efficient than these, but they are exceedingly expensive. Now, I got this for a tenner, actually five pounds, you got two and an old hoverboard and it's second hand, so not that expensive really, obviously. But that's really because they came in vogue and now going back out of vogue and you're finding these being trashed. And so you can pick them up for next to nothing. In here is a load of neodymium magnets and in here is a load of ceramic magnets. So of course, the, the magnetic field in there is very strong. But what that means is the counter torque is much higher. So the magnetic field isn't very strong here, but the counter torque isn't very high. Magnetic field is strong here, but the counter torque is. So for instance, this has 0.8 of a newton meter on the shaft as torque. This is 8 newton meters. It's 10 times the torque to turn this than it is to turn that. Of course, it's bigger, but the magnetic field is stronger, and so the torque goes up. Of course, there are physical limitations on motors. I mean, this is tiny. And the amount that that can generate actually is um, huge, actually. But the limitation on it is to do with the wire size. You might generate too many amps for the wire to carry. You might um, breach the insulation because the voltage is too high. But that type of motor is actually a good motor. And of course, they don't come only in those sizes. You can get really quite big ones like this, which is going to be rated much higher than that little one. So there are physical limitations on the motor that you use in terms of the wire that's actually in there. But the motor type itself isn't really a limitation. Now I've been going on about torque and speed. Because torque and speed are the really important things. You can turn a motor at that speed, you'll get that output. But of course, it's about being able to turn it at that speed. And I physically can't do that. Now this one, this one's actually is actually really nice and it's likely to be the one that I use, okay? Even though it's not as efficient as it could be. This one is um, 500 RPM with eight Newton meters of torque, it takes 36 volts and quite a few amps, I can't remember the amps, but that's what the specification for that is that we're interested in. So if I can turn that at 500 RPM, that's what I'll get out. Now, I can't do that physically, obviously. I can't just bolt that down and try to spin that at 500 RPM. I'm not physically capable of it. I need some kind of gearing in there. Now, gear relationships are to do with circumference. So my wheel is um, around about 6.1 meters in circumference, or 610 centimeters. And this is about 50 centimeters in circumference. So it has a ratio of roughly 12 to 1. I timed the um, RPM on the big wheel when I was walking in it. At a comfortable walking space, I can turn that around about 10 RPM, something like that. Given that we've got a 12 to 1 ratio, at comfortable walking, I'll be able to turn this only 120 RPM if I set it directly one against the other, which is obviously not its rated speed, so I'm not going to get the rated output. But in order to do that, I need to apply 8 Newton meters on it in order to get that to turn. Now, just like um, the speed goes up with the gear ratios, so does the torque. That means I'm going to need to apply on the wheel round about 80 Newton meters to be able to turn this. If I can't supply 80 Newton meters, I will not be able to turn that. So as the gear ratio goes up, the speed will go up, but will, so will the turning force. So 
I need it really to turn that at 500 RPM, roughly four times that. So 8 and 8 is, uh, eight and eight is 16, 32. So I need 320 Newton meters on my wheel if my wheel had that gear ratio. And I can't supply that. That wheel turns by the weight that I'm putting on it, and I weigh about 82 kilos. So as I step on there, I'm very roughly applying that. And of course, that will turn this at that gear ratio, but only at 120 RPM. I can't get it any faster because I can't apply the force. Now, if I had a couple of people and we weighed more than that, then we would be able to apply more force. Because we can apply more force, we can overcome the counter torque, which goes up for the gear ratio by the same ratio as the gear ratio. I hope that makes sense. But those are the limiting factors. The limiting factors have got very little to do with the motor. The limiting factors have got to do with the torque requirement and the gear ratio we use for that torque requirement in order to get this to rotate at the speed we need it to rotate at. So basically, it actually doesn't come down to motor type at all. It actually comes down to the speed that you can get the motor to spin at at the torque that the motor shaft requires. Those are the important things. The actual mechanical arrangement of the motor can make it mechanically easy to fit. So for example, all I've got to do with this is bolt it in place and rub the big wheel on there and it's going to turn. That's really simple and I don't need much in the way of gears or anything. That makes it very attractive because as a mechanical solution, it's actually a very good solution. It's easy to do and it'll give a reasonable result. But in terms of efficiency, then that actually is far more efficient than that. It's 10% more efficient. This is only 5% more efficient than that. So it depends very much on what a mechanical arrangement that you're going to have. What's easy for you to build? What's easy for you to incorporate that motor? And do you have a ready gear set? Because remember, we used the gear set from a shredder to turn that and get about 60 watts out of it, which is incredible if you think about it, but it was easy for me to do because the gear set, because the gearing was already there for me. Okay, the key point. Remember a motor at a speed with a power will generate a torque. That means that the counter torque, which the original torque is a measure of, is what you have to provide to get it to generate. That's more a mechanical thing than it is a motor thing. And then you're choosing motors by efficiency is one choice you would have. Another choice is how easy they are to incorporate mechanically into what it is that you're building. And of course the other is cost. This was only five pounds because it was junk. This was a bit more expensive and these of course are dirt cheap. So it just depends. Now of course you cannot run a motor for more than the force you can apply on it. The force you apply is the mechanical arrangement you've set up, be it a water wheel, a windmill, a, a big wheel, a hand crank, and none of that matters. It all comes down to the same problem. Anyway, I hope I've um, helped in your thinking about generators and motors as generators and mechanical arrangements to make them spin. Thank you very much for watching the video. <laughs> I feel it was a bit long and wordy.